Hey, welcome back. You're watching Impossible Color. And today's video is a quick tip on five incredibly useful functions in Adobe Bridge. If you haven't used the program before, it's basically just a visual file management uh, program that integrates with all of your Adobe products. And it's got a lot of great functions that you can't do in a file browser. So I, th I find the best way to work in Adobe Bridge is to have some thumbnails on the left and a nice big preview panel on the right. There are a lot of other panels that I kind of tuck away that I don't use as much, the metadata filter folders and stuff, but they can be easily brought up if you ever need them. So on a typical uh, portrait shoot, I might shoot anywhere between uh, 500 to 1,000 images in, in a few hours. So uh, as you know, it can be pretty intimidating trying to curate all of your images, especially something like this where a lot of the images are very similar. Maybe there's subtle little differences um, between each one. And, it's kind of overwhelming when you're trying to edit them one by one if you're just to go through them and say okay which which one do i like the best and which ones do i want to edit so these five tips will make your life a lot easier so the first one is selection now just like a regular file browser you can hold down shift and it will select everything in between the first one that you select and the last one that you select easy enough if you want to, you can also hold down control and you can skip and selectively choose any ones in any order. If you want to get rid of one, you can easily just hit control again and limit your selection. The second tool that I want to show you is the magnify. Now, probably one of the most important things uh, for your focus is getting the eyes nice and crisp. So with the magnify tool, you can simply select anywhere on your image and you can kind of see this little pointer in the corner of this box it will show what it's magnifying. So I usually get it right in the eyes to make sure they're nice and in focus. And what you can do is you can just quickly go through each of these images and you can see which ones are in focus. So I can see right off the bat that 6113 is not in focus and I've got bad chromatic aberration. So then I can go and do my control selection on 6113 right here, take it out of the selection. Now I've got fewer to work with, making my life a lot easier. So it looks like I've got some other ones here that are also not the best focus. So I can eliminate that one. Uh, this one's not too great either. And this one's nice and sharp. Both of these are nice and sharp. This one's losing a little bit. So I'll get rid of that one. And now I've got a nice, narrowed it down to a nice set of five to work with. So the next tool that I want to show you, this is number three, is your ratings. So the ratings, you can right click on an image and you can rate it from one to five. And you can see these little stars that pop down here. And in your uh, content panel, you can also see the tiny little star there. While ratings are nice to think of, I find that there's actually a tool that works a little bit better because it's more visual. That star is really tiny in there. And when you're working with a lot of files, it doesn't really get noticed that much. So what I like to do, let's just get rid of this rating here is actually use the labels. So if you right click, you got a lot of different labels here. So the images that I really like, I'll go to the to do label and you can see it makes it purple. And you'll also notice that it disappeared from here. And the reason why it disappeared was because I have this set to sort by the label. The great thing about this is your images will automatically go down to the sorting. So all the images that you want to work with get separated from the other fluff. 
So you can see even finding my way back there is very cumbersome. I'm going to show you another tool that's going to make your life a little easier too. Not only can you deselect these, but you can also do a reject on them. So you get this little red reject. If there's any particular images that you just don't like, you know, we've got a bit of an awkward slant in this image. Something's just not quite right about that one with the way the arm is. That way, when you're done going through all your selections, you'll see this red here, and you can just permanently delete those if you don't like them. You can just leave them as reject if you want. You don't have to delete them, but I find it's good to uh, curate images. You don't want to be stacking up files, taking up all that space when you don't need to. And I like the smile on this one. So now it turns purple and it shows up at the bottom. You can see that I have some other images from that day that are uh, also in purple. So now that I've got it down in this area, I might take a selection of all the images that I had with the to-do label and I can further refine it by going in and say, let's make this one a review. Or you can go in whatever colors you want to. You can just ignore whatever the labels are. I kind of wish that you could rename them. So basically I use the to-do as my, my first level of sorting. And then I use the review in this aqua color for the ones that I actually want to edit. And then when I'm done editing them, I'll go to the red label. So this is just a really great way of knowing where you're at with each particular image. And next I'm gonna show you the fifth and really powerful function of Adobe Bridge. And that is to copy and paste your development settings that you did in Adobe Camera Raw. Let's pick these two images here. I'm going to open one up in Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm going to make it go back to its original settings. So Camera Raw defaults. This is no editing at all. Let's go back to Bridge. Now, this one has been uh, developed already. So I'm going to right click that, go down to Develop Settings, copy those settings. Go to this one, same area, and paste the settings. Now you get this little menu that comes up and you can specify exactly what you want to paste. So I want similar images, so everything's going to be the same for me. So that seems great for one image, but let's say that you had a whole bunch of images and they were all underexposed or they all had lots of edits. Basically, you can just go develop, paste settings, and do an entire row. You can do all of your images. For example, if you had a certain uh, color style, maybe a split tone that you wanted to do, or maybe convert them all to black and white, anything at all. So there you go. There's five incredibly useful functions that you can do in Adobe Bridge. I hope this was useful. And if you want to subscribe, you can click that little green button just down there. If you have any other cool Adobe Bridge tips to share with the community, please add to the comments below. See you next time. This is Impossible Color.